Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Miskill. I am here at the 9.1.5 Mage Tower. It is Tuesday, December 7th, so just so you know, you have two weeks to do the Legion Time Walking Mage Tower. After that, it goes away until Legion Time Walking is back, but it is the first day, and I'm going to try to release this video on the first day so that you have enough time to, you know, get it done in case you're struggling with it. I am looking at a few bunch of messages from people uh in slash say and a lot of people are struggling with it so hopefully this guy will help any i don't know, any healers or any misweavers in particular that might be struggling with it and with that said let's jump right into it first off i want to talk about my talents and just tell you why i chose certain talents i cho chose chi wave in the first row because there is a very significant dps check especially in the first stage of the mage tower and most of the damage is single target that you're gonna be doing i tried chi burst for a few of the tries it just didn't work out i think the cooldown was too long it didn't do enough damage it didn't even really do enough healing so i went with chi wave it works way better it bounces most of you have a tank and a rogue that and it bounces off of them so and yourself so i think chi wave is the best one uh, in the second tier i also tried tiger's lust and chi torpedo both of them were really fine I kind of lean towards Chi Torpedo. You only really use it, again, in the first stage where it's mandatory. I like Chi Torpedo because you get more distance with it, and then you also get a speed increase, so I think that that's kind of nice. There's no roots or slows or anything, so I don't know. Tiger's Lust felt kind of weird. Manatee just felt good. Ring of Peace is, I think, the best one. I did try Song of Chi G for a few of the attempts. It worked out okay because it is on a 30 second cooldown, but you had to line it up really well and it was just a little bit too inconsistent. So I went to Ring of Peace and Ring of Peace is really good. You can't waste it at all. Um, in, in the, what is this, the fifth tier, I was torn between Healing Elixir and Diffuse Magic, but I think Diffuse Magic is too good in phase three and I think phase five, those are kind of the best times to use it. Healing Elixir is still really solid, but I think Diffuse Magic just when you need it the most, it's pretty much you know you're gonna use it and then these last two tiers i went uh, statue and focus thunder statue is i went i, I used chi g for 90 percent of the attempts and then when i started to get close to the final boss i realized like i need more self-healing so and then there's not a lot of times you're gonna really chi g on the last boss because you're gonna be spreading out and in range most of the time so I went with statue it gives you really good self-healing because you can just put statue down and then you can just quickly channel it on yourself and then you can keep doing damage gives you a nice little self-heal and then focus thunder because again th there is a pretty significant damage check for for this mage tower right you know for the healer one so um i went with focus thunder it gives you two charges of thunder focus t so then you can thunder focus t rising sun kick tiger pump rising sun kick tiger pump rising sun kick black oak kick, rising sun kick so again it gives you a lot of damage and those are my talents now, as far as other things you might need, I didn't really use many consumables. I used three consumables. I used Drums of Deathly Ferocity, which is basically drums. I don't know if it's the best version of it or worse. I actually don't know, um, but I just used those instead. And then Heavy Desolate Armor. So this gives you plus 32 stamina on your chest. I don't think I still have it. I do, I do. I still have uh, 32 stamina on my chest. And then, again, this uh, Shadow Core Oil, uh, it gives you a buff on your weapon. Oh, I don't have it anymore. I think it's for an hour. I think it's for an hour. Yeah, 60 minutes. And it gives you your abilities a chance to deal shadow damage. So, again, there's a pretty big damage check, and any damage is good. Finally, as far as gear goes, because I'm sure this is a common question that I'm going to get, um, I did not switch any of gear. I did not farm any Legion or didn't farm anything. I did not use anything different for them from my crit verse set. Uh, the only change I made in the time walking set was this trinket, and that's just because it helped. It gives a slow. This trinket is not mandatory. I don't think it's make or break. You could use any other trinket. It, the only change are the trinkets. That's it. Now, with that said, let's jump right into the mage tower. Okay, this is stage one, and I'm just gonna voice over the gameplay. I'm gonna try to do it in real time to make it, you know, as real as possible for anyone who might be doing it. So again, I don't use many consumables, even though I should. But yeah, for the most part, this first uh, wave, its first stage is five waves of mobs. The first one right here is just this one archer, and I start off with Chi Wave, and I use Thunder Focus T Rising Sun Kick just to get maximum single target damage out. Now. I have run into issues where sometimes uh, ads don't kill it, but here's the mana sting. And what you want to do with mana sting is you want to put yourself, your tank between you and the target. If it hits you, it's not a big deal. You can just dispel it instantly, but it is a pretty big dot and it does 
run you out of mana pretty quickly. So you really you you could put it on yourself, but you want to dispel it quickly. Um, otherwise, you might run into issues. I quickly run over to the second wave because sometimes I spread out too much and I can't interrupt both of them. But you want to kill the rising mage and the rising mage, right? And what you want to do, you do you're trying to do two things right now. The first is arcane blitz. You want to interrupt this. Mist weavers don't have an interrupt. But what you want to do is you want to interrupt it when you see three stacks of the arcane blast. Otherwise, this mob is going to one shot your tank. And at the same time, mana sting is going to be going on, going out. And again, you want to put yourself between you and the tank. And at the same time, interrupt the, the uh, mage. Again, you see, we dispel the dot, put the tank between us, and then we just single target kill this. This mob doesn't, it just has a lot of health. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but just keep that in mind. And at the same time, you want to put Renewing Mist on as many people as possible. I say it in literally every single Mist Weaver video, but you want to put it out on as many people as possible. Dispel again, and you see, I'll take this time to put a port down because there are mobs that are going to be getting enraged and chasing after you. So put your port down somewhere safe, far away from where the waves are spawned, and you'll be fine. And this guy just keeps going back and forth. Now, I did take my time kind of here because I want to get right I want to get leg sweep back as soon as possible. So I kind of do take my time doing damage here. Completely personal preference. I just kind of waited. I want to have my leg sweep and ring of peace as often as possible. And again, here we have a new mob here. We have the Risen Soldier. There is, there's two things that this guy does. One, it's Knife Party, which is an AOE damage that goes out. And two, he gets enrages and targets somebody. And if he gets to you, he does a lot of damage. And we'll go over that once it happens. Now, the most important thing here is you want to interrupt Knife Party and Arcane Blitz kind of at the same time so that the mage loses stacks. Knife Party, again, you, you cannot interrupt Knife Party before it goes off. Otherwise, he'll cast it again. So you want to wait for him to go off. And then the, as soon as it he finishes the cast, Ring a Piece or Leg Sweep, it doesn't matter, or Incap either way, but rise, um, Ring a Piece interrupts both of them. So that's that's kind of why I do that. And then you can actually take still take advantage of the Ring a Piece because he does fixate. He always fixates after the Knife Party. So what you want to do is you want to stay on the other side of Ring of Peace, let him kind of run through it, do a little bit of damage to the mage, and then pour it away. And then this is why I like Chi Torpedo, because as soon as he gets to me, you can roll away. But as what you see right there is I actually use the Crackling Jade Lightning to get away from the big fella. So I pour it away, and then you don't need to use your mobility. As soon as he gets to me, I Crackling Jade Lightning, it knocks him away, and then by the time, you know he get knocks and tries to get back he just is done being enraged so from here you just do damage there's really nothing else to it he does enrage again which is kind of weird because normally he does a knife party first but you know some there are it, it is it does feel a little bit buggy but for the most part it's like it's fine um also you want to make use of expel harm while you're running because expel harm is a quick instant heal i just heal through this knife party because i don't want to waste in cap or leg sweep on this i, I don't want to waste it on one mob that's at 50 percent and now this next phase or this next next wave this is wave four this spawns two of those soldiers so the two knife parties and two enrages and a rising mage so again no matter what wave you always want to focus the mage at all at all times and focus your damage on that i do use the crit trinket the um i actually don't even know the name of it but i put a crit trinket down just so i can help do damage and you can see i have, I have leg sweep and bring a piece for this so again the knife dance it gets cast at the same time the mage is casting so as soon as both these knife dances go off i leg sweep instantly i try to stay in and do damage but again as soon as the knife party is over they're going to enrage and target somebody and they're both on me sometimes they're not sometimes they're not it's actually a little bit difficult when uh they target two different people but i pour it away and then they they stop fixating on me and i just heal i use essence font here you can pirate with manatee i think i use manatee with essence font a little bit earlier but here comes dance party again and i bring a piece it immediately and it does get a little bit scary but you just keep healing as much as you can i'm taking advantage of the ring of peace by staying far away and healing my rogue at the same time i do use life cocoon and something i just noticed is i actually never put statue down because i was so used to using chiji every single time uh, and this, this was only like the second or third time i used statue that i didn't even put statue down but make sure if you're using statue you put statue down um so we kill that soldier and here comes the second one it the second one doesn't really matter i mean it does but you just cut it away reset your port because you do have one more wave after this knife dance i again when there's only one soldier left i don't want to use anything i don't have it but i don't want to waste paralysis like sweep bring a piece on just one ad so i do heal through it mana is not really too much of an issue and i kind of just get away pour it away from this fella and he should be dead i i wish i pour I, you should probably kite a little bit closer because then these guys get kind of spread out and then i got to take aggro but you know that's again so the last wave here is the mage the the uh ranged fella and then the soldier so you get one of each ad again focus the mage 
then you want to kill the soldier then you want to kill the rain the hunter one so it does bug out for me so i do get the worst case scenario on this poll but i'll show you what happens so here comes knife dance i like sweep it and i immediately start just doing damage as much damage as i can but again at the same time uh there is a mana surge coming out over here so i try to put myself in between me and the tank it actually goes on the rogue that's fine i can just dispel it as soon as i can boom i dispel it heal up my rogue while i'm being fixated now for some reason i don't know if they bugged out i don't know what happened but they should normally focus the soldier but they don't focus the soldier they focus the hunter and that's really not good that is really i start to panic here a little bit obviously i want to heal as much as i can and here comes with a mana sting or mana sting and i in cap it so then hopefully they go on this knife dance guy but now i have to heal through this and i have very little mana so hopefully this, this doesn't happen to you if it does i mean you can you're seeing right now you just want to kite as much as you can and then i still have the mana sting coming in hot i try to put myself in between me and the tank but actually the hunter hits it so this last wave was a little bit sloppy partially by me and then partially because i don't know if they got i don't know if they bugged or something but yeah they definitely weren't hitting the right target so now we just have the hunter guy left you just put yourself again not a lot of damage from from this ad at all and that's really nice and you could just do damage i chi wave is again really really good for single target damage rising sun kick of course off cooldown i do use touch death because it doesn't you know doesn't really or i don't Okay, I don't use touch death, but oh, I also use drums here. Oh, I forgot to mention at the start of the last wave, I used drums. And now stage two, you just take a breather. What I did is I just waited until my uh, my hero slash bloodlust debuff was at like two or three minutes. I drank mana and then I just started the next phase. So during phase two, stage two, get some mana, wait for debuffs to go away, wait for your cooldowns to come back, and then start stage three. Okay, so you start stage three by just walking into the room, they close the door behind you, you're not going anywhere, and you're just, I, I put a statue down, if, I'm, if you're using statue, I put statue down in this room, and these guys right here, they do AOE damage in melee range, and if you play a Mistweaver, which odds are that you do, all of our damage is pretty much melee. However, this is why I play Chi Wave and what I do instantly right off the bat just to get some room because this is this is a timed part of it. You have five minutes to complete this stage. What I do here is I diffuse magic and touch death one add just to give me some room to breathe because otherwise they are moving. They are you, it's very subtle, but they are closing in on you and it's really it, it gets a little tight. So what I do is I touch it, I diffuse magic, touch death to take less damage because once you kill these guys, it does 50% of your max health. So you can only kill one at a time of these eyes. And then all I do is I use Chi Wave and you can do a little bit, I don't know, you, you can cheat a little bit and they're, you can actually deal damage to them without getting hit by the melee uh, AOE. Um, you, their hitboxes are like kind of, they're pretty big. Their hitboxes are pretty big. So what you do is you just rising, sick off, rising sun kick off cooldown, heal yourself when you kill them. Cause again, you can't kill more than one at a time. And then I rob them away cause they're getting a little too close. And then I chi wave rising sun kick, crackling jade lightning. If neither of them are, you know, if I don't have either of those and yeah, you could use tiger palm also to get some stacks of ancient teachings of the monastery and do some damage. It's too bad. You couldn't use one of the new legendaries. It'd be, this would be so fun to fist weave. I swear it, it would also make it a lot easier, but you know, I mean, I mean, what can I say? It'd be a lot of fun. So yeah, so we got four down one more to go again, rising sun. You have to quickly weave in and out this weave you have to weave in and out um if you're playing any other healer it just again if you do any melee damage just heal and do damage um these little green balls right here you just have to do aoe damage to like negate them but don't stand too close because they do give you a pretty nasty dot so i use spinning crane kick to deactivate them and then what i do here is i use my second on use trinket that makes the target slowed but it gives me a ton of crit you can see this debuff right here and then this i just spinning crane kick the uh, the mobs and then rising sun kick off cooldown to kill to for single target damage because this is aoe damage but it's also single target at the same time so again spinning crane kick as much as i can but rising sun kick off cooldown thunder focus see rising sun kick and then chi wave as well again i i think chi wave is underutilized i think it's probably carried me during this i think it's a really good um spell to have and you just focus on single target damage now this next part is what you need to do is you need to dispel i spinning crank it to get, negate that one you need to dispel this little ad that's running and then you need to heal very quickly in mob so thunder focus c enveloping mist to heal you do one at a time make sure you dispel as well and then just one at a time just heal them you know you maybe if you don't heal them the first time that's fine and then you just focus on the ad again single target damage and this is like this this is the same hunter mom from the first wave 
that does the, uh, what is this, the mana sting? Now, it doesn't do damage if it goes off, but I still interrupt it. I use Ring of Peace, and then again, Chi Wave, Rising Sun kick off cooldown, and it's just single target damage. I also believe I use Leg Sweep here um, for interrupts. Not really necessary, but still fine. I think you could let this go off. You could also use the mobs in the hallway to soak it. Either way is fine. I just... You know, it doesn't do that much damage. It doesn't do any damage if you get hit by it. You just have to dispel it quick enough. <laughs> so just dispel it quick enough if you don't have any interrupts. I incap it. That's that's fine. Um, but yeah, just focus on single target damage. It's it, again the very very high damage check here because um, if we're looking at the time, you got two minutes and we still got two more halls to go. Now this next one again, spinning crane kick, roll down the hallway. This is actually really easy for Miss Weaver. It's just spinning crane kick. It's AOE. You take no damage. Um, and you just, yeah, go right through it. It's actually really nice. I don't know. Maybe other healers struggle with that. I have no idea. Maybe Shaman. But yeah, Miss Weavers don't. And now this one, this this hall, actually, there were two or three pulls where it kind of, kind of fooled me a little bit. I focused on killing the eyes. Don't focus on killing the eyes first. Focus on killing the big Dread Corruptor. And this is also, I do use my second drums here. So... I use drums, I use my unused crit trinket, and then you just crank damage. Rising Sun kick off cooldown as much as you can. And I put my statue down as well. I do waste a little bit of hero here because I didn't put my statue down first. But yeah, you kind of want to avoid the balls. You don't want to stand on top of them because you do get a debuff. And if you get the debuff when one of the eyes goes off, you just you pretty much just instantly die because I believe it increases the amount of damage you take. So again, you could use your Rob to knock the eyes away. Stay away from the, the eyes that are with the little laser beams. I try my best to, it doesn't do, go too well, but you know, I tried. And then just focus on damage. Now, one little trick here, save your fortifying brew for when the this guy is in touch of death range, so if he has less health than you, um, because fortifying brew increases your health, which means it makes your touch of death, touch of death stronger. So keep trying to do damage, spinning crane kick as well, do a little bit of um, AOE damage. And then I fortifying brew really close here, uh, should be kind of soon. A fortifying brew, and then I touch death, hope, soonish because i gotta get out of the way and then i rolled away from the eyes to get away from the aoe damage that are in melee range and then from there it's just killing three of the eyes i got 45 to 50 seconds left and no rush here i, I wasn't in a rush i didn't want to mess up so i crackling jade lightning i heal myself up and then you can do your chi waves and your rising sun kicks when they're in in range and from there it's 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 no biggie I was being extra safe rising or i use a ring of peace to get them away rising sun kick uh melee range and uh yeah, th this this last room was really difficult. It took me three or four times I, because of this room. But focus on the big mob first. Bring a piece, the eyes, when they start to get a little too close. And touch death when he's in range. Now, stage four is similar to stage two. You're just chilling and you're just hanging out. I What I did is I waited for all my cooldowns. And then I waited for the debuff to get to about three minutes. And then I started stage five. Okay, so you start stage five by just opening up the door and it'll instantly just move you on to the next uh, next stage. You walk up these stairs and this is an interesting part of the mage tower that's kind of cool. Two of your teammates are going to start fighting. They're under some kind of corruption or fell power, I'm sure. And they're going to start fighting. And at the same time that they're fighting, you need to keep them alive because you can heal them. Um, this boss is going to be drawing in souls. Two to three at a time is what I saw. Maybe one at a time. There's maybe instances where there's one at a time, but I saw two and three at a time. And what you need to do is you need to not only keep your teammates alive, you need to you need to heal the souls up because they're at a, around 10% health when he's drawing them in. And you can see the souls here. He's gonna draw them in, you know. And you, I, I use a lot of cooldowns here just to keep them alive. And here we go. The, your teammates start fighting. This big fella is gonna start moving to the center of the room, and you're gonna see the souls that are brought in because they're gonna have. Um, like green lines and they're gonna start drawing in closer now if you don't heal them you have to you have to kill them uh before the boss fight starts so it's highly recommended you need to heal eight of them what i do is i use yulon and i just throw in thunder focus team developing mist literally tops them you can just move on the hot just heals through them two vivifies boom done so that's three down again what i would recommend is put renewing mist on your teammates because if you heal the souls with Vivify, your teammates get healed. So that's what I did. Uh, Yulon goes down, but what you can do is I try to go for an Essence font here, but for some reason it doesn't it doesn't heal the targets. Um, I go for Renewing Mist. I go for Revival here. Oh, I didn't even go for an Essence font. I just revivaled here, and then you can just AOE heal and heal them with Vivifies, and it works out fine. And then once the souls are healed, you just 
heal up your teammates as much as you can. Uh, you can't let any of them die or that's it. It's 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 over. And then finally, I only have two souls to heal before the final boss. So what I do is I just, I think uh, Thunder Focus T enveloping missed one and then I have Thunder Focus T enveloping missed another. And uh, that's it. Don't be, don't accidentally click the ones behind because I have done that and have uh, unfortunately lost. So there you go. You have it. Heal up your teammates. Now mine was bugged. My guy got bugged. I couldn't actually drink before we pulled him. I couldn't drink. Um, we immediately, because I healed all the souls, we immediately go into the last, the, the last fight. So stage six, you should be able to chill. I don't. And we immediately go into the final stage. Now here, there's two things. There's actually three things you need to be doing. The first thing is the boss is going to put a dot on you. And what that dot does is once it expires, it any of your health that you have it's going to do that damage and spread it to your teammates so what that means is you need to get as low health as possible and you do this by standing in the fire now also if you didn't notice the fire takes up parts of the room so what you have to do is you have to stand on the outside of the room and bait them around the outside of the room and then at the same time when you get this debuff you need to stand in the fire to get low enough so that your teammates don't die as you saw in the opener if you have too much health your teammates die so i get really low and what you can do you can see i have fortifying brew you you want to rotate fortifying brew um diffuse magic life cocoon as much as you can and you want to not put hots on yourself so you'll see i very rarely heal myself i get very low here and when you get low, don't freak out because the the dot doesn't really do that much damage. The only real the only real damage of this last boss is the dot that goes out. I mean that's it. And then standing in the flames. That that's really it. Actually, it's not even a dot. It just does something. The only damage is this uh, these pools on the ground. So utilize expel harm, so it doesn't put a hot on yourself. And then go for vivifies on yourself as well. But normally you shouldn't renewing mist. Like renewing mist uh, goes to me, but you really want to keep yourself low so you don't have to freak out and like focus on that rather than healing. So again, I use essence font. I use chi wave pretty much off cooldown, and I try to do damage when the boss charges at me as much as I can. So again, just make sure you're staying in the pools so that they. Um, my dock gets low enough my my fella gets a little low i wish i overlapped the pool a little bit more but that's okay essence font here to heal i do life cocoon him because he is getting a little low but you can see i'm low on health i just need like one tick of the blood of the pool and he just runs right on me i actually take oh almost two but i take one shouldn't be too bad here again that doesn't do that much damage and i try to stay very close to the previous pool so that it doesn't you know doesn't take up too much of the room which is important and uh yeah, Chi Wave, again, off cooldown. This is why I didn't take Chi Ji and I took Yulon because I can't Chi Ji that much on this fight. You really just can't. You can be at range most of the time. And I stay in this, I get two ticks and you can see very little damage goes up because I'm at such low health. So Renewing Mist and a Renewing Mist and Vivifies. I do have Hots myself here. I kind of wish I didn't, but you know, that's okay. I don't have the dot out uh, or the debuff. I keep saying dot, but it, it's a debuff, not a dot. And I take two ticks of it, which is fine. I cast, right. so right here, what I did is I used, I channeled Soothing Mist on myself, but I try to get rid of the hot. So I take one tick, I take two tick, I get low, but I channel Soothing Mist on myself so that my statue starts healing me. And then I start immediately healing my teammates. And I get low, but that's fine because I use Expel Harm again. Utilize Expel Harm, it's a quick instant heal. A lot of healing with Vivifies, Renewing Mists. Small little essence font hot on me. It doesn't do that much healing. Chi wave off cooldown. And you can see we're starting to get a little bit close. Uh, we're a little tight on room here, which is fine. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention I do use drums. Um, I did use drums as soon as the boss started. Or whenever, you know, whenever you get the debuff away, you use it, um, drums. And you can see I get really low again, but it's fine because I have Yulon. I try to heal myself with uh, my statue. But again, don't put hots on yourself because you're going to heal through the debuff. And you don't want to do that. You want to get as low as you can. It, you, I think this this was tested. This, this, this fight was designed to make you freak out a little bit. You stand in the debuff, get very low. You know, you're a healer. You've been in these situations before where people are low. I Essence Fawn here. Again, very low on health. I have Yulon. I try to get a little bit out of it, but I was too late. And the, the tank is, or the um, the final boss is pretty low, 23%. Uh, we do have Touch of Death very soon, but I try to do as much damage when he runs at me, and I take the debuff or the, the dot to lower the debuff damage. Chi wave again off cooldown, and it's getting a little scary now. Uh, I, there's probably one more. I, I got enough room for like one more, maybe two. 
And so I'm crafting Jade Lightning. He is in touch of death range. So I, I just keep myself in mind that it's very close. I do have the debuff. I have enough room for one more and I get very low. I don't want to die with touch of death. So what I do is I life cocoon, I think the tank or is it myself? I life cocoon somebody then I can just touch death or nobody. I just touch death and that's it right there. That is it. It was a really good challenge. It was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it for the Mage Tower. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. This this was a pretty good the, the good uh good throwback to the Mage Tower. It was very nostalgic. It was nice. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this was helpful. And I'll see you later.